Good evening. Let's take our hymn books tonight and turn to 159. 159. Let's stand tonight as we sing Blessed Quietness. 159. Joys are flowing like a river since the comforter has come. He abides with us forever, makes the trusting heart his home. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, he speaks peace to me, how the billows cease to roll. Bringing life and health and gladness all around this heavenly guest, vanished on me, leaf and sadness, changed our weariness to rest. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, he speaks peace to me, how the billows cease to roll. Like the rain that falls from heaven, like the sunlight from the sky, so the Holy Ghost is given, coming on us from on high. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, he speaks peace to me, how the billows cease to roll. Ushers, please come forward on the last. What a wonderful salvation where we always see his face. What a perfect habitation. What a quiet resting place. Blessed quietness, holy quietness. What a sure in my soul on the stormy sea he speaks peace to me how the billows cease to roll well, amen it's good to see you here tonight and uh, don't forget if you have a cell phone be sure to turn it down or off during the service tonight I was able to talk to brother Doyle Johnson today and he sends his and his wife's greetings to everybody. Now, he asked prayer for his daughter, Marissa. Uh, she had a spinal tap done yesterday to check for multiple sl uh, sclerosis. And so they're going to find out shortly if that's what she has. She's been having a lot of problems lately. And so pray for her about that. Now, if, even if it is that, he said that they're going to be able to treat it. And uh, we can pray for her as she has it, but uh, be praying as they're waiting to find that out. Continue to pray for Brother Wesson and his health needs. Brother Chris Barnes had his procedure today, and uh, it was a blessing seeing Wes. Is he doing better? Is he here? And continue to pray for Wes Hoffman and his needs with his back. Uh, continue to pray for the folks in Ukraine. I did see an article today that mentioned that uh, there's a possibility that uh, Russia may be ratcheting down and going back home. And I don't know if there's any truth to that or not, but that would be good. And so we need to pray for that, for the people that are suffering there. Continue to pray for our country and pray for the folks up in the northwest part of the state. Brother Wheeler sent me a thing just a little while ago they're having 80 mile an hour winds and baseball size hail up there. What counties is that in? You remember? Cimarron and Texas County. So pray for them. Pray for the folks that are there for their safety. Uh, continue to pray also for our friends in Israel. Tomorrow night we'll have soul winning. We'll meet in the chapel at 630. I want to encourage everybody to come for that. 
Uh, you're invited to come to the school Friday afternoon and cheer on the players in the elementary flag football games, which will begin at 3.20 p.m. That'll be out on the field behind the school. There will be a teen and college and career softball game this Friday behind this. Uh, that's back there on the field as well. And that'll be from 5.30 to 8.30. There's no cost. All are welcome. Of course, you'll want to bring seating. And uh, they'll need to bring their own refreshments and so forth. Is that right? So remember that. And then uh, Saturday, we'll have soul winning. We'll have the meeting at 10 o'clock in the chapel. The Books, Beans, and Bible Club will meet Tuesday in the chapel. That'll be at 6.30 p.m. Bring a favorite book. Come out for a good time of fellowship. And then don't forget about the voter registration. Uh, you need to be registered to vote by June the 3rd. So that's coming up. That's just in a few weeks. And if you know anybody that is 18 or older that is able to vote and they're not registered yet, you want to make sure to let them know to get that taken care of so they'll be able to vote in the upcoming primary elections. Brother Saladin, pray for us as we begin the service tonight. song, open your Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter number one. Colossians chapter number one. We are getting close to the end of the school year. Uh, I think we are two weeks and one day away from the last day of school. Is that right? Can anybody tell me if that's correct? 
Nobody knows. Actually, it's six weeks away, if I remember correctly. But I think it is two weeks, and so uh, I know the kids are looking forward to summertime. I know that the teachers are looking forward to summertime. I know that the parents are not looking forward to summertime. But uh, anyway, be praying for them as they're finishing up this year, and uh, we're looking forward to a good summer as well. I want to tell you a story about Ricky. Um, Amy texted me Sunday night after they had got home from church. Now, at their church, they have their communion table down at the front, right out in front of the pulpit, and uh, keep it there. And so after the service Sunday night, Ricky was there standing in front of the communion table. And he had his finger, and he was running it over the letters that were on the table. Does anybody know what's on the table? Can you tell me? What's it say? Did he say it right? He didn't get it. This do in remembrance of me. Remember that's on the front of the communion table. So he's tracing the letters with his finger. And he got to the I and he said I. And then he got to the C and he traced it with his finger and said C. And she is convinced that he remembers that from last school year when I babysat him on Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, and we'd go in the conference room, and we'd go, we'd go all over this building, and I'd point at things and ask him, what's that? And I'd tell him what it is now, today, all the time now. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? He does it constantly. But uh, he traced those letters and said them, and she's convinced it's because I had written his name up on the marker board in the conference room a bunch of times, spelled it out, said the letters out loud. She said that's the only place he could have picked up those two letters. He still remembered it almost a year later. What a blessing it is for a little mind to be able to learn at that age. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, we're going to read verse number 1 down through verse number 12. Now, what is our subject for Wednesday nights? We're studying about prayer. And so we're going to look at it here in the book of Colossians and uh, continue on our study through uh, the rest of the New Testament as we study this most important subject of prayer. Colossians 1, starting in verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learn of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Now, look back up to verse number 3. You notice there the mention of prayer in the latter part of the verse. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Underline those words there at the end of the verse. Praying always for you. And then skip back down to verse number 9. 
and it was mentioned again there in verse number 9, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Go ahead and underline those words there. We do not cease to pray for you. And so we're going to look at this subject tonight here in this particular book in the sense of not stopping praying. Okay, so the title for the message tonight is Don't Stop Praying. And each of the times that it's mentioned, there is a mention of it in a way to show us to keep praying, to keep praying. So don't stop praying. You know, it's easy for us. We live such a fast-paced life here in America. There's so many things that we have in our lives that keep us occupied. They occupy our time, all of the time. And it's easy, if we're not careful, to let up. That's the first thing to go, and Bible reading right alongside of it. And so don't stop praying. Let's pray, and then we'll get into the message tonight. Father, we thank you uh, for the blessing we have of being here in church tonight. It's always an encouragement to come and to get to fellowship for a little bit before the service, and then again after the service to hear what's going on in people's lives and Uh, to be encouraged by the things that they tell us that they're doing and that they have accomplished. And Lord, tonight though, as we open up your word again, we pray that we can focus our minds on it. We pray that we can take and set aside anything that may be a distraction to us. We pray, Lord, that we can concentrate on the message that you have for us out of this book on this subject of prayer. And Lord, I pray that all of us in in studying this tonight, that we can see how important it is for us to keep praying every day, to be faithful in it. And Lord, I pray that uh, for those who are young and new in the Lord, Lord, that you'll show them how important it is to walk with you every day and to establish that time alone with you, to take their burdens to you and to ask requests from you. And for those of us who've been saved for a while, Lord, we pray that we would be reminded of how important it is for us to keep praying. Bless tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the order in which they are placed in Scripture, Colossians is the seventh of Paul's church epistles. It is most probable that the Apostle Paul never visited the city of Colossae Since there is no biblical record of him having visited there, neither is there any hint in his writings that he had visited the church that was in Colossae. In Colossians 1 and verse 4, you may have noticed what's said there, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. And that would indicate to us that he did not have a relationship with the people there like he did in other places where he had been, and he had been actually the one to plant the church there. Nevertheless, the members of the church that was there were as important to him as they were also important to the Holy Ghost who had inspired Paul to write this letter. It would seem that the likely person to have planted the church in Colossae is Epaphras, who is mentioned by Paul more than once in this letter. Colossians 1 and verse 7 that we read said this, As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. We've pointed out previously the similarity between the books of Ephesians and Colossians. Although Ephesians is longer and more fully developed in its thoughts than Colossians is, giving indication that the book of Colossians had been written first to deal with and correct the heresy that seemed to be developing in the church at Colossae and to keep it from spreading to other churches. The Roman world in which they lived at that time was known for its adoption of things from other cultures that had that it had conquered and was heavily influenced specifically by Greek philosophy. 
I want to ask you to turn from Colossians. Hold your place there and turn back to Acts chapter 17 and verse number 18. We're going to take note of some of the philosophies that were current in the world at that time that were present in many of the places that Paul visited and are written about even several times in the writings of the New Testament. Acts chapter 17 and verse number 18 tells us this, Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Now, in his note on this verse, Dr. Henry Morris points out, quote, like all other Greek and Roman philosophies of the day, Epicureanism and Stoicism were based on an evolutionary worldview. Morris goes on, quote, the Epicureans were essentially atheists like modern Darwinists, whereas the Stoics were pantheists, much like modern New Age evolutionists. Both believed in an infinitely old universe, and both rejected the concept of an omnipotent, transcendent creator. That's something to be aware of as you read things and study things. If someone is talking about an old earth, those are the kind of people that have that kind of philosophy. Another of the philosophies that was prevalent in that day and against which the Apostle Paul warned in this very book was the philosophy of Gnosticism. We've mentioned that before. Gnostics were caught up in the inflated opinions and bloviating about knowledge, about things that they thought they knew more than what the Bible had to say. In his book, Way of Life, Encyclopedia of the Bible and Christianity, David Cloud states about Gnosticism, Gnostic means knowledge. Gnosticism promoted a sort of secret society of the intellectual. Only a certain group were considered advanced enough to be accepted. Twice in Colossians 2, Paul uses that word rudiments, and you might note that word, take note of that word rudiments, both times in the negative sense, warning against them. The word as it was originally written by Paul is very closely related to the Stoics mentioned in Acts 17, 18. So let's go back to Colossians chapter 2, and this time we'll pick up in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 8. And bear with me as we're setting this out for us to look at tonight because this was an important warning that Paul had to the Christians there in Colossae. Colossians 2 and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. There's that word rudiments. You might note it, underline or circle it and not after Christ. Skip down to verse 18 in the same chapter. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, from the which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. You might take note of that word head there, underline or circle it, draw a little line out to the margin, and write in there next to it the Lord Jesus Christ. He is referred to in Ephesians as the head of the church. Look at verse 20 here. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, 
which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Now Paul here was flat out warning the Colossians to beware. Colossians 2 verse 8 started with that word beware. To beware of anyone or anything related in any way to those philosophies that would pull people away from the simplicity that's in Jesus Christ. Turn, if you would, and take note of this verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3, to the simplicity that's in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3. And this is what it all boils down to, if I could put it in my words, my terminology for today. People have a hard time accepting that Jesus Christ did everything that was needed for our salvation. They want to add things on. There are religions that all they do is they go from one religion to another and they add on. If they travel to another culture in another place, they add on the religion from that place to what they believe, to what they practice, thinking that doing all of those Extra things are going to cover all of the bases for them so that they'll be safe when their time of death comes. But look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3. Paul here to the Corinthians whittles it down to what it really is that saves. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So Paul is saying, look, the gospel is a simple thing. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not all that other stuff that's out there that people have come up with, that they've concocted. That does not save. All of it together does not save. The only one that saves is Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul is saying to the Corinthians and in so many words what he said to the Colossians there in Colossians chapter 2. In so many words, his simple instruction to the Colossians, to the Christians there at Colossae, we'll see in this book is, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. I'm going to give you three things tonight out of the book. Number one... Pray constantly. Pray constantly. Now, Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 3, we read there at the beginning, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Circle that word always. Praying always for you. Paul is telling them here, that he prayed constantly for them. English Baptist minister Leslie Stokes told the parable, Once upon a time, there was a tree, stately and strong, and beautiful in its appearance, but appearances are not always to be trusted, and they were certainly not to be trusted in this particular case about this tree. The tree knew inwardly that its massive strength was beginning to wane. When the wind was strong, it had felt itself shaking ominously and heard suspicious creaks. With this insight and knowledge of its weakness, the tree made effort to grow another branch or two and then looked stronger and safer than ever. But when the next storm came, there was a terrific snapping of roots and But for the support of the neighborly tree next door, it would have been flat on the ground. When the tree had recovered from the shock, it asked its neighbor in sincere curiosity, tell me, how is it that you have not only stood your ground, but are also able to help me to as well? Oh, that's easy, replied the neighboring tree. 
while you were busy growing new branches, I was strengthening my roots. Praying constantly, always, is that ever-strengthening of our spiritual roots in order not only to be able to withstand when the winds of the storms blow hard, but also to be able to help others through prayer as well. Don't forget how that the Lord Jesus Christ, as he was teaching his, his disciples, he instructed them to be constant in their prayer. Turn to Luke chapter 18 and verse number 1. Paul was not telling the Colossians something new. He was merely repeating what Jesus had said. He was practicing what Jesus had told his disciples to do. Look at Luke 18 and verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. You know, life throws so many things at us. And they come at times when it is the most inconvenient. They come at, at the hour that is the most difficult. They are massive. They are weighty. And all we can do is not faint and pray instead of fainting. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. The Oxford Dictionary of the English Language defines that word always as at all times, on all occasions, always giving thanks in prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 2, we give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers, always making request in every prayer. Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 4, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy. So being thankful always, making request always, and then always laboring fervently in prayer. Turn to Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 12. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12. Always laboring fervently in prayer. Colossians 4 and verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So, number one, pray constantly. Get in the habit of praying throughout the day. How many of you spend time in your car? Okay. What are you doing while you're in your car? That's a time to pray. You got to pay attention to the road if you're driving, for sure. But you can, you can multitask. You can chew, chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. You can pray while you're driving. How many of you have ever have to wait in, a, in an office? You've got to sit in a waiting room somewhere. That's a time to pray. Pray constantly. Number two, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 9. Pray without ceasing. Colossians 1 and verse 9. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Paul was just laying it out here for them that he did not cease to pray for them. Pray without ceasing. Now before we consider praying without ceasing, it's important for us to not miss the indirect implication of not praying alone. Look at the verse again, Colossians 1 and verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Paul was not speaking of himself as in the plural. He was talking about all of the other people that were missionaries with him, that worked with him that traveled with him, 
They were all praying for them. And folks, we've got to get it down that we've got to be in prayer together about things. Look back at Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 19. Notice the words of the Lord here in this first gospel. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 19. He puts it right out there so that we'll know if we're going to get our prayers answered, it makes more sense for us. We'll be more successful with it if someone else is praying with us or if we are praying with them for their request. Matthew 18, 19. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Now, I'm going to give you a prayer request. Some of you are already praying for this, but I want to remind everybody, and we all ought to be praying for it. Today, we made our monthly building payment. We are down now to $135,000 left to pay off our building. Praise the Lord. But you know what? I'm praying that God will just send the money and let us pay off the rest of what we owe. How many of you would join me in praying for that? Would you do that? Would you be willing to do that? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to circle this verse in your Bible or put a note next to it, mark it somehow, add this to your prayer list, and as you pray every day, pray and ask God to help us to pay off the building and remind him of what Jesus says here in Matthew 18, 19, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. We had mentioned previously about the similarities between the books of Ephesians and Colossians. This is one of those instances where the similarity is striking. In Ephesians chapter 1, turn over to Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 15 and verse number 16. Ephesians chapter 1, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 15 and 16. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now about these verses concerning the Colossians, Albert Barnes states, the progress which they had already made and the love which they had shown constituted an encouragement for prayer and a reason why higher blessings should still be sought. Barnes said, we always feel stimulated and encouraged to pray for those who are doing well. And it's easy to pray for people that is doing well. It takes work to pray for those that are not. Paul prayed without ceasing for those of Colossae. He prayed without ceasing for those of Ephesus. He prayed without ceasing for those in Rome. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 9, For God is my witness, whom I serve in my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. He prayed without ceasing for churches. He prayed without ceasing for individuals. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that Without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. And he wrote, Paul, and told those in Thessalonica that they also were not to stop praying. One of the shortest verses in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 tells the Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. In other words, Paul wanted them, and the Holy Spirit wants us to also pray 
without ceasing. I was reading in preparation for this message and was reminded of the words in 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 23. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, that I will teach you the good and the right way. Pray constantly, pray without ceasing, and then the last thing, number three, pray continually. Pray constantly, pray without ceasing. Number three, pray continually. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 2. Pray continually. Colossians 4 and verse 2. This is an easy outline. I mean, it's so easy. Anybody could walk up and hit a hole, hole in one with this passage of Scripture. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Paul is telling them, do not neglect to pray. He's telling them, maintain the spirit of prayer. He's telling them, embrace every occasion to pray. He's telling them, watch for opportunities to pray. In Psalm 109, and verse number 4, the psalmist wrote, For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. Paul wrote in Romans 12, and verse number 12, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant, in prayer. In the second point, we took note of the fact that the, the Colossians were praying together. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, or that Paul and the missionaries were praying together. We do not cease to pray for you. Praying together was a practice that had started even before the Holy Spirit came. Did you know that about the early church? Acts chapter 1 and verse number 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. It was a practice that continued in the early church. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. During times of persecution, like when Herod killed James, the brother of John, and put Peter in prison, they prayed together. Acts chapter 12 and verse number 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Sometimes... Some circumstances seem impossible to overcome. Such was the case of two women who were friends and who had both come to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior at about the same time. The two ladies found that they had several things in common. The thing that gave them the most in common was being saved. They also lived near each other, and they also went to the same church. But then there was a fourth thing that bound them together almost as much as the first being that both their husbands were lost. Because of this, they were determined to get together and pray every day for their husband's salvation. And this they did for seven years. Every day, both of them excused themselves from their daily routines and responsibilities and went apart with the other to pray for both their husbands to be saved. For seven years they did this, day in and day out. No matter the season of the year, no matter the weather of the day, no matter the condition of the personal health of either of them, they prayed. As the seventh year of praying together came to a close, they debated about whether or not it was worth it to continue. 
because there had been no answer, no change in either of their husbands, no evidence of salvation in either of them. But because of the time that they had already put in, seven years, 84 months, 2,555 days, they decided to push on ahead in renewed strength, continuing to pray every single day for God to hear and to answer their prayer for God to save their husband's souls. Well, it was another three years, ten years in total, when one of the women was awakened by her husband, who was under great distress and conviction of sin, and he was calling out to God to save his soul. The woman could not get dressed and ready quick enough for the day. She could not wait until she normally until the normally scheduled time to get together and pray with her friend. She had to tell her of their answered prayer. She should not have been surprised to see her friend coming to her from the opposite direction, walking as she herself was with hurried steps and a similar gleamy face. You see, the other woman's husband had also awakened early in the morning under conviction and calling out to God for salvation. After ten agonizing years, God had heard their united and persevering prayer and answered for both of them in the very same morning. Don't stop. Ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Don't stop praying. Let me ask you tonight have you already given up on prayer? Have you slipped up and stopped praying every day? Have you stopped taking your request to God? Have you given up on Him and His ability to answer? Is it a matter that you don't care anymore? Whatever it is, no matter how grave it is, you can start back up today. I want to ask you to stand to your feet. I'm going to give a short invitation tonight. And I want to invite you to come, do business with the Lord. Maybe you've slipped up in recent times. Maybe you haven't been faithful as you should. These simple things, they seem simple, just like our salvation is simple. But they work. It's not up to us to have them answered in our timetable. It's in God's timetable. Everything is. It's just a matter of us being patient and waiting for Him to answer. Would you come as Brother Van Manen sings? Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, me and make me after thy will while thy waiting yielded and still have thine own way Lord have thine own way search me and try me master Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine.
touch me and heal me, Savior divine. All right, if you'd look up here for just a minute. Now, don't forget about that prayer request. Let's all be praying every single day. God can do that. I've just been amazed at how many times I've seen the Lord provide in ways that were a They were beyond my ability to imagine or think them up. And he's done it so many times, he can do it again. And I want to see him do it. I want to be able to call up uh, the pastor over at Compass Church and tell them, uh, we'd like to meet with you. We've got a check for you. Now, that's my prayer. I want to be able to do that. I, I, I want to see God just do something great where we know it's him. It's not us. It's not, and, and yeah, we've been faithful. We've been faithful in our payments. We've never missed a payment. We've always been on time. But I want to just see the Lord just do something fantastic where everybody has to know that was God that did that. So join me in praying every day for that. Amen. Let's do that together. Brother Lyles, would you lift your voice up back there and pray for us to close?